This video is here to help you with equivalent fractions. Let's see how we can identify and write equivalent fractions. Equivalent means the same value or amount. For example, five one pence coins are equivalent to one five pence coin. We use the equal symbol to mean is equivalent to. This also applies to fractions. This bar model shows that one half is equivalent to two quarters. They represent the same amount. Another way to check to see if two fractions are equivalent is to look at the relationship between the numerator and the denominator in terms of multiplication and division. This is called the multiplicative relationship. With these two fractions, we can see that the relationship between the numerator and the denominator in terms of multiplication and division is the same, which means that they are equivalent. This bar model has been divided into quarters. The bar model below has been divided into eighths. We can see that one quarter is equivalent to two eighths. The next bar model has been divided into twelfths. We can see that one quarter is equivalent to three twelfths. We would say that one quarter is equivalent to two eighths and three twelfths. We can also see that the multiplicative relationship between the numerator and the denominator in each fraction is the same. Now let's take a look at how we can identify equivalent fractions without using visual representations. Here we have the unit fraction one third. Remember, a unit fraction is a fraction where the numerator is one. To find an equivalent fraction, we can simply multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number. So if we multiply the numerator and the denominator by two, we will get the fraction two sixths. We would say that one third is therefore equivalent to two sixths. This also works for non-unit fractions. A non-unit fraction is a fraction where the numerator is more than one. For example, if I wanted to find an equivalent fraction to the non-unit fraction three fifths, I could simply multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number. In this example, I have multiplied the numerator and the denominator by three to give the equivalent fraction nine fifteenths. We would say that three fifths is therefore equivalent to nine fifteenths. It is also helpful to be able to complete equivalent fraction statements such as this one. I know both of the denominators, so I can use the relationship between them to help me. I know that five multiplied by three equals 15, so I must apply the same rule to the numerator. Four multiplied by three equals 12, so we can say that four fifths is equivalent to 12 fifteenths. With this example, I know both the numerators, so I can use the relationship between them to help me. I know that 10 divided by 2 equals 5, so I must apply the same rule to the denominators. 12 divided by 2 equals 6, so we can say that 5 sixths is equivalent to 10 twelfths. Sometimes you'll see fractions on a number line like this one. This number line is counting up in fifteenths, so the first thing we need to do is fill in the missing fractions above the number line by counting up in fifteenths. So, by counting up in fifteenths, we can see that the missing fractions are six fifteenths, nine fifteenths, and twelve fifteenths. The next step is to identify an equivalent fraction for each one and write it in its simplest form. Remember the rule. To find an equivalent fraction, we must multiply or divide the numerator and the denominator by the same number. For all of these fractions, I know the numerator and the denominator are both multiples of three, so I will divide them by three to get two fifths, three fifths and four fifths. These fractions are in their simplest form. And if you want to find out more about simplifying fractions, you can check out our other video on the Twinkle website. Now it's your turn. Here is a number line. Can you identify the missing fractions and, if you can, write an equivalent fraction for each one in its simplest form? Pause the screen here and have a go. Press play again when you are ready to continue. All finished? Great work. Let's take a look at the answers now. Remember, you can pause the video if you need a little longer to check your answers. Now let's try a different question. Can you complete the equivalent fraction statements? Pause the screen here and have a go. Press play again when you are ready to carry on. All finished? Perfect. Here are the answers. Now it's time for our final challenge question. Here are some equivalent fractions. Try and find the values of A, B and C. Pause the screen and have a go. Just press play again when you are ready to carry on. 
All finished, well done. Here are the answers. The complete fraction we have is 6 24 6 24 in its simplest form is one quarter, as we can divide both the numerator and the denominator by six to give us one quarter. Therefore, all the fractions in this question must also be equivalent to one quarter. If we are finding an equivalent fraction to one quarter, where the denominator is eight, the numerator would be two, as four multiplied by two equals eight, and one multiplied by two equals two. If we're finding an equivalent fraction to one quarter where the numerator is four, the denominator must be 16, as one multiplied by four equals four, and four multiplied by four equals 16. And finally, if we are finding an equivalent fraction to one quarter, where the denominator is 96, the numerator would be 24, as four multiplied by 24 equals 96, and one multiplied by 24 equals 24. So A equals two, B equals 16, and C equals 24. I hope that this video has helped you to identify and write equivalent fractions. If you're looking for any more maths videos just like this one, make sure you head to the Twink website to check them out. See you next time. Hi, this video is here to help you with simplifying fractions. You'll need to use your understanding of the highest common factor in order to do this. A factor is a number that divides into another number exactly without leaving a remainder. If you'd like to find out more about factors, you can check out our other factors videos on the Twinkle website. A common factor is a factor that is shared by two or more numbers. For example, the factors of 8 are 1, 2, 4 and 8. And the factors of 10 are 1, 2, 5 and 10. Which means that the common factors of both 8 and 10 are 1 and 2. The highest common factor of two or more numbers is the highest number that is a factor of those numbers. For example, the factors of 10 are 1, 2, 5 and 10. And the factors of 20 are 1, 2, 4, 5, 10 and 20. The common factors of 10 and 20 are therefore 1, 2, 5 and 10. And the highest common factor is 10. Let's take a look at how we can use our knowledge of common factors to help us in simplifying fractions. Here we have the fraction 3 fifths. Do 3 and 5 have a common factor? 3 only has two factors, 1 and 3, and 5 only has two factors also, 1 and 5, which means they are both prime numbers. This means that the common factor of 3 and 5 is 1. If we divide the numerator and denominator by 1, the fraction stays the same. Therefore, if the only common factor of two or more numbers is one, then the fraction is already in its simplest form and cannot be simplified any further. Let's see if we can simplify this fraction. 6 48ths. The first step is to find the factors for the numerator and the denominator. The factors for six are one, two, three, and six. The factors for 48 are one, two, three, four, six, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty-four, and forty-eight. And the common factors are one, two, three, and six. Therefore, the highest common factor for both numbers is six. The next step is to divide the numerator and the denominator by the highest common factor. Six divided by six equals one, and forty-eight divided by six equals 8. So 6 48 in its simplest form is 1 8. Let's take a look at how we might simplify a mixed number. It's important to remember when we simplify a mixed number that the integer does not change. An integer is a whole number. So if we had the mixed number 6 and 8 24 we would leave the integer as it is and find the factors of both 8 and 24. The factors of 8 are 1, 2, 4 and 8. And the factors of 24 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12 and 24. The common factors are 1, 2, 4 and 8. Therefore, the highest common factor of 8 and 24 is 8. The next step is to divide the numerator and the denominator by 8. 
8 divided by 8 equals 1, and 24 divided by 8 is 3. Remember, we leave the integer alone. So 6 and 8 24 in its simplest form would be 6 and 1 third. Now it's your turn. Try to show each of these fractions and mixed numbers in their simplest forms. Pause the video here and have a go. All finished? Well done. Check your answers carefully and make any corrections that you need to. Now I think you're ready for a challenge. Use your knowledge of simplifying fractions to have a go at this question. Priya is simplifying fractions. Is her number statement correct? Explain your reasoning. Pause now and have a go at the question. Have you got an answer? Fantastic! Because 7 and 24 do not have any common factors greater than 1, the fraction is already in its simplest form. So Priya is not correct. I hope this video has helped you to understand simplifying fractions. If you need some more math support, we've got lots more videos like this one available on the Twinkle website.